let's take a look at the different battery types for EVs and how to care for them. Once you've taken delivery of your EV, the main problem people face is how to care for their battery. First of all, you've got to know what sort of battery you have. Basically, you'll have some version of a lithium ion chemistry, of which there are six. But for ease of um, working it out, let's simplify it into two main groups. The ones that use iron, that's iron, ferrous material, and the ones that don't. So the one that does is the LFP battery or lithium iron phosphate. And they're considered to be a lot safer than the other types. All these different chemistries have got different energy densities, energy draw and so on. Um, but they've all got different uses. The main ones that are used in EV batteries at the moment that are not the LFP ones are NCA or nickel cadmium, uh, cobalt aluminium and NMC or nickel manganese cobalt. And of course the LFP, which is lithium iron phosphate, which is got lithium ions in it, but it's got iron with the R in it. Very confusing for me. There are other types as well, such as LCO, which is lithium cobalt oxide, LMO, lithium manganese oxide, lithium titanate, and so on. But all these have got different purposes and are used more in mobile phones, laptop computers, UPSs, and so on. So the fear that people have had is the need to replace the phone battery and the laptop battery every couple of years. I'm gonna to have to do the same with an EV. Well, no, because two reasons. One, they've got a different chemistry in them. And two, they've got a decent battery management system, unless you've got Nissan Leaf, but we won't go there. So Tesla predominantly are using NCA and LFP, whereas EV manufacturers, the other ones, are using mostly NMC with some LFP. And of course, BYD are basically using their own LFP blade battery, which is considered to be one of the safest. Now, EV capacity is measured in two ways. The gross total uh, capacity or the net usable capacity, which is always a bit less. Um, and this is so that EV manufacturers can prevent full charge and full discharge to protect against damage to the battery. So you've got a small buffer at the top and a small buffer at the bottom. So how can you tell which battery you've got? Well, with Tesla, you can look at the charging screen and if it's got the words daily and trip, then you've got an NCA type battery. Whereas without the word trip, you will almost certainly have an LFP battery. So all Tesla Model 3s and Ys that are now being made currently that have got the single motor rear wheel drive, they've got LFP batteries in. Any other Model 3 or Y long range performance or Model S or X do not have an LFP battery in. They've probably got an NCA. But as I said, if you own a BYD, you've got an LFP battery. But if in doubt, consult the handbook or ask a dealer. Because it's very important that you work out which battery type you have as it affects the charging levels. So if you still can't work it out, are someone who's got the same type of car or um, an owner's club or something like that. So first of all, let's deal with the non-LFP battery, i.e. the NCA or NMC type. These should never ever be charged to 100%, except in rare circumstances that I'll tell you about in just a moment. Basically, 90% is the top level that you should go to. If you continuously charge to 100%, you'll end up shortening the life of your battery unless you drive it immediately. So for daily use, 90% is the tops. If you're going on a long trip and you'll need that extra distance for some reason, then yet by all means charge it to 100%, but don't leave your car sitting at that level more than is absolutely necessary. What I usually advise people to do is charge it to 90% and then before you leave, 
add in that extra 10%. Now that could take half an hour just to add in that extra 10%. So about half an hour before you're due to jump in the car, whack it up to 100 so that you get in the car and drive within a few minutes of it hitting 100%. With LFP batteries, things are a little easier. Manufacturers recommend charging to 100% at least once a week. Some people say, keep it at 100% all the time. But there is a question that this could deteriorate the battery slightly. Why charge regularly to 100%? The car's computer estimates the amount of charge in the battery and hence how much further you can go by measuring the voltage. As the battery is used and the state of charge decreases, the voltage decreases and it's that that's being measured. With LFP batteries, the voltage drop from full to empty is not a lot, especially when you compare it with the other style batteries. It's finding it a lot more difficult to estimate the state of charge and therefore the range. Charging it to 100% helps it calculate its state of charge better. And sometimes it's a good idea to take it right down to 20% and then up to 100. And that way the computer can readjust. Once your battery gets down to around 20%, it is a good idea to find somewhere to charge it. Going below 10% is not the best for the battery and draining it completely is definitely an absolute no-no because you can brick it. So the optimal state of charge range for all batteries is 20 to 90%, with the LFP going to 100% once a week. Doing this will help preserve the battery from degrading too quickly. So then the next thing on protecting the longevity of your battery is how you charge it. There's basically DC fast charging, such as Tesla superchargers, and AC charging, which takes a lot longer because it's slower. Frequent fast DC charging does affect the battery slightly more than the slower charging. So for my uh, Tesla Model 3, I've used the superchargers 10 times this year, and we're now in August, uh, usually when I'm traveling long distances and need to top up quickly. Um, and I think I've used a 50 kilowatt DC charger once. All the other charges I do are AC destination charges, either in my garage or at shopping centers or wherever, wherever. And that will help protect your battery. In summary, know what type of battery you've got, LFP or not. Only charge to 90%. Unless you've got the LFP battery, take it to 100% once a week. The other types take it to 100% only when you need that extra range and drive it immediately. Don't let your battery get too low. Once you get down to 20%, you need to have a plan to charge it again. Certainly don't get below um, 10%. I think I've taken my battery down to 4% once. It will keep going, but if you do it regularly, battery damage is going to occur. Um, when you go away on holiday, I've got a video and it'll be up here somewhere um, on how to leave your EV when you go on holiday. Um, so just check out that link and hopefully that will help you. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to click the like and subscribe buttons below. See you all soon.